Hi guys, today on Bike Matters we have the Sinistrain 125cc. So first things first, I'll just start with the adventure bike bits on it because clearly you can see it's quite adventure bike heavy and you can see the influence that it's got here. So, I mean, first things first, you've got a visor in like a hypermotor beak with the crash bars and the hand guards basically here, as well as the pannier sets and metal foot pegs down here. So overall, you can see a lot of the parts that Sinister thrown in to make it an adventure bike styled 125cc. Now, because it is an adventure bike, there is of course a few bits to consider and that's one of those the seat height and how comfortable it is on the road. Now the seat itself is 800 mil tall, so it's enough for me to sit on it at six foot four, I can comfortably sit on there, but it's still accessible for shorter riders or just people who don't really want to be getting on an 850 mil seat height or above. So it makes it nice and accessible. Alongside that as well, you've got some nice low handlebars, so they're, they're not too high up and the tank is quite low as well. So overall, it is still quite accessible as a 125cc bike, but it does still give you that sort of neutral positioning when you're sat on there so you can sit nice and upright and really comfortable on the bike. Of course as well there's 870 mil width for the crash bars and the handlebars. Of course crash bars are a little bit thinner but the handlebars really do take up quite a bit of width when you maybe filtering on the road and stuff like that. It's not too much but it is still quite wide so you've got to bear that in mind as well. So what would this bike be like as a commuter? Now I think this one's pretty much perfectly set up to be a great commuter bike. Of course you've got panniers and a top box here. We've got the slightly increased top box which will fit a helmet. They are plastic, but you're going to be able to see quite a bit of stuff that you can fit in there if you're going to work or away for the weekend. You might have to pack light, but either way, it's good to see that. You also get a 14 litre tank. So that's going to see you do around 80 to 100 miles per gallon, and it will cost maybe about 17, 18 pounds to fill up. So around 300 miles per tank. And I think overall, that's a really good sort of figures you're looking at there. If you're looking for a perfect commuter bike, this is definitely going to be somewhere at the top of your list if you are considering that. The seat's really comfortable as well, nice and soft and you get quite a decent amount of space to where you can sit. Of course, there is a pillion space here and the pillion does fit quite nicely. But again, you don't really look at 125s really for pillion bikes because they just don't have enough power really. So what's the motor on the Terrain 125 like? Now it's a four stroke, of course, single cylinder motor, and it produces about 11.2 brake horsepower and 11.2 Newton meters of torque. It is air cooled and that's quite funny because looks can be deceiving here. You've got a massive air vent for a radiator, but there's no radiator. It is air cooled. so. Whilst it gives the look of a liquid cooled motor, it is still air cooled, so worth bearing that in mind. So what's this bike like on the real world? I mean, if you're looking at lower end speeds and maybe back roads, throwing it around, it's a lot of fun. The torque really pulls you out of the corners and you can accelerate nicely. The only problems you run into is when you start getting to the topper end of the speed. So when you're looking at like the top speed of 55 to 65, depending on where you look, it really does sort of start to struggle past 45 to accelerate to a high speed. You can get this, as at least I have, to 65 miles per hour, but it's an indicated speed, so it might really be around 55. It doesn't struggle on fast roads, and you can comfortably just sit there and cruise along, but there's gonna be no overtaking, and you just have to be happy cruising in the left lane. So the gearbox on the Terrain 125 is a manual five speed. Of course, you could expect six gears on a bike like this, but because the top end isn't really there, six gears isn't really needed. Now the brakes on the Terrain 125 are a front and rear disc. It's 270 mil at the front and a rear 240 mil disc. They are linked with CBS and I will go into that a little bit later in the video about how the CBS works. But overall the brakes are pretty decent. So when it comes to the wheels and suspension, you get 17 inch front and rear tires and upside down forks with a single rear shock at the back. Now the wheels are absolutely fine, feel nice and stable. They do look a little bit thin when you're having to look at them from the outside, but on the road you can't really notice anything and they feel completely fine. The suspension is quite soft and when I sit on it at 15 stone, the rear shock does compress like 90%. So there's a little bit still in there, but it is quite a lot of you know compression for a rear shock and there's no preload adjustment possible either. So what you get is what you, what you get. There's no extras, you can't really adjust anything. So you just have to be happy with that. I found them okay on the road, but of course you'll see that in a little bit as well. Now, of course, you've got a Toro exhaust here. It is a full system, and you wouldn't expect to see that on a normal terrain out of the sort of manufacturer or out of the dealership. So just bear that in mind that it's an accessory or an option that you can buy and purchase yourself if you want to. It does sound incredible, but just don't expect it to sound like that out of the manufacturer. 
In terms of the dash at the front here, you get everything you'd expect. So you've got your revs and sort of stuff like that on the left, which is analog. And then you've got the fuel indicator, the speed, the trip, gear indicator, and basically everything else, which is digital. There is a USB port on the right as well, which is really handy and a good little spot. And then of course, all the controls that you'd expect as normal, which you can see on the road when I'm riding this around. As a bit of a side point on this bike as well, when having a look around, I would notice that there's Allen key parts on pretty much every part of the bike itself. So if you were to get one, and I was really considering it myself, you could remove basically everything with an Allen key and then basically just get rid of the crash bars, the panniers, you know, even these bits, everything. Just literally get rid of everything with Allen keys and just see what it looks like as a Hyper Mozart. I think it would be quite nice, but you know, that's up to you. Bearing in mind as well here, the screen, non-adjustable. So again, you can take that off with the Allen keys if you want, but it's up to you. So you get a couple of color options with this bike. There's satin silver or the Rosso red that we've got here. I think the Rosso red looks really good, but satin silver is quite a nice one as well. So you've got a couple of decent options to choose from. In terms of price, the bike is £2,589, brand new from a dealer. And that's an incredible price for what is an incredible looking bike. So it looks good, sounds good. What's it like on the road? Let's have a look. So we're off on, out on a little ride on this. It's a beautiful Sinister Terrain 125. It's got a Toro exhaust on it as well, full system. So don't expect it to sound like this um, out of the box. It sounds amazing for a 125 single cylinder. Nice little raspy little sound to it. Oh, it's just so fun to ride. So fun to ride. So of course, because this is quite a big bike in terms of seat height at 800 mil, I fit on it absolutely fine. And for a 125, considering I'm six foot four, it's unheard of. Now for such a big bike, it handles absolutely amazing. And considering it only puts out that 11.2 brake horsepower with about the same newton meters of torque, these sort of speedier A roads aren't where you're going to find fun. And now it can, it can definitely cope on these roads, but it's just not quite as fun. It's the real twisty back roads that we're going to be on in a minute that really set this one apart. You can really like flick this one around, like even though it's got the crash bars, you feel like this is nimble as anything. do have to push it right to the red line to really get the most out of the gears no problem at all because of course the brake horsepower is always going to be a little bit higher up red lines around nine to ten thousand see how far we go with this fourth gear it's indicating 59 now the top speed sinis say themselves is 55 now this is a bit of an uphill I weigh about 15 stone. The bike's 150 kilograms. So all things considered, it shouldn't be doing 57 up a hill or an indicated 50 or 56. Have I spoke too soon? <laughs> but it, it shouldn't be doing these speeds up a hill. So I would have no real concerns of having this on an A road if you have got a commute where you're going to be going on a, a lot of A roads. It will handle them. And you can, you know, as long as you're happily going to sit behind a lorry on a dual carriageway and just sit in that left lane, I'd have no problems at all. So yeah, this bike itself, these are the sort of roads that you want to be on if you would decide to buy one yourself. These faster B roads, we can really, you can really throw it in to the corners, use that nimbleness got quite thin tyres but on these roads you don't notice it at all. Now the suspension itself is quite soft so when I sit down on this bike again at 15 stone the rear shock compresses completely uh, or almost completely. It's got a little bit more movement in it but it does want to compress quite a lot. Of course no real problem if you're lighter than me because I'd want to be able to adjust the suspension if I was taking this bike off road. With me sat on it if I go over a heavy bump and I mean a heavy bump, I will feel it. 
the front forks don't compress quite as much but they're still quite soft so you know all things considered the suspension is soft and feels good but there's no adjustment and you sort of you get what you're given in a way something to follow on to that point of the suspension is the fact that the brakes are linked now often i don't really have too many problems with combined braking system but even more so you notice it on this bike now when you compress the rear brake the front brake comes on as well and then you get a, a weird sort of pitching forward where the bike is leaning you in forward as well as compressing the rear and it's a bit of an unfamiliar feeling if you've ridden a bike with ABS so therefore without the CBS system but all things considered the brakes work really well you get 270mm up front 240mm at the back and they're both discs and they work well to stop the bike other than that combined braking system which to be fair is out of Sinus's control it's not something that they can really do other than include an ABS now they could include an ABS but that will then see the price of the bike go up because it's an ABS system as far as I'm aware it's quite a bit more than CBS so there's a brief point on the price £2,589 brand new for this Sinus terrain and you get it exactly how it looks minus the Toro exhaust. So you get the panniers, you get the crash guards, you get the hand guards. Everything you'd expect. And it looks like a big bike. You get nods off the uh, the bigger bike as you're having their little bit of fun on the road. Because it does look like a big bike. And it, it certainly does feel like a big bike in terms of the positioning sat nice and neutral and upright arms out in front of you legs underneath you you know you, you sit quite comfortably on the bike and this is the first adventure bike i've ridden i'm really happy with how comfortable and how well i fit on it so i think now is a good time to mention of course bike matters is powered by Lexham Insurance. So if you've got yourself a 125cc motorcycle or scooter, maybe you even got yourself a Sinus Terrain 125, if you give Lexham a call and let them know that you've uh, been watching Bike Matters video and you want to get a quote on your 125 motorcycle, then maybe you get yourself a competitive quote and get yourself on the road insured happily and cheaply, of course. The guys at Lexham are really, really nice. I know the staff really friendly. Can't recommend them enough, to be fair. So yeah. Give Lexham a call, get your insurance sorted. Everyone's happy. I'd really wonder how this bike would look if you really took all of the crash bars off, all the hand guards, all the panniers. Would it then just become like a, a motard? Would it look really, you know, really sporty? And I don't know. I'm just really a, a massive fan of those hyper motards. As a commuter, absolutely fine. You get a 14 litre tank. I mean, this does what, 80 to 100 miles per gallon. We filled it up and it's now done two bars. It does go up and down, of course, because the fuel indicator does slosh about when you move move the bike, but that's, that's to be expected. As I've already noted in the studio, you can fit the helmet into the top box at the back. Now, we do have the bigger top box, but there's something you can buy from Sinis. I think it's about 70 pounds plus for that indicator still on that's something that i have found indicators and switches whilst good the indicator switch uh, sometimes you press it thinking it's cancelled the uh cancelled the indicator but it hasn't other than that the switches look nice get this little light switch here which just literally does the daytime running lights and that's it of course everything else is used expect passing lights and full beam low beam dip beam you can't see but there is a gear indicator which again for a 125 i really appreciate something that learners can really sort of refer back to when they're unsure if they need to shift down or what gear they're in just riding around the clutch is nice and light as well you really can shift quite nicely on this and the gearbox, 5-speed, you don't need a 6-speed on this bike at all because it struggles to get into the 
the speeds that you'd really find it useful. One thing I will say, of course, whilst the bike is really comfortable to ride, the tank is still quite low and the bars are a little bit low as well. Again, it's not a huge issue at all, really. But um, an adventure bike, you'd expect to have quite high bars and a high tank sitting underneath you or in front of you, I should say. But that doesn't really have this. This is more like a neutral 125 that's got some adventure bits thrown on, but does it really well. So we've just done a little bit of off-roading. A little bit, I mean, it was literally a little bit of off-roading, but it gave me an idea of what, what this bike is like off-road. And because it's a terrain 125, I feel like you sort of have to at least give it a whack off-road. And I think it did really well, because it's only 150 kilograms. It feels nice off-road. I mean, it's got a lot of low-end torque and a low-end kick, so you can comfortably ride the bike off-road and you know if you get in any hairy situations you know that the bike is only 150k to, to pick up which isn't bad there's definitely heavier bikes in the market for your money you get a really good little first step into the adventure market of course I'd love a bit more power but the price point of this uh, terrain £2,589 you're not necessarily expecting too much more from it really it could have abs but i'll put the price up it could have a bigger engine but i would put the price up and overall when you're sitting on this bike you just can't help but smile especially on these twisty back roads now, Sinis themselves are looking to bring out the Sinis Terrain 380, so it'll be a parallel twin, A2 compliant, liquid cooled, whereas this is air cooled, six speed, ABS, and I think it's going to be about £3,500. And yeah, that's just incredible. I don't know how they're going to manage to do that, but I'd absolutely love to see it. I'd love to give that a go after riding this. So, as is quite natural, we're heading back to Bike Max HQ, so I think that'll do for today's video. Of course, thank you so much for watching, as always, guys. Really appreciate it. If you leave a comment down below about what you think of the Sinus terrain, and how loud do you think the exhaust is, of course, I'll reply to everything I can. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. Cheers for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you can get notified of all of our content. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.